こんにちは、キム・テイです。皆さんは元気ですか私は元気ですよ。In this lesson, we're going to learn how to give or ask for explanations and set expectations. We're going to be covering some very important concepts that are used extensively. So let's get right into it. In English, we can change the nuance and set some implied expectations by changing the order of a sentence. For example, let's take a look at two identical questions. Are you a student? And you're a student? Even if I read these two sentences in a neutral voice, they have a very different tone just by how the question is ordered. The first sentence is a neutral yes or no question with no expectation or implied meanings. However, the second sentence makes the speaker sound like he's surprised or perhaps expecting the person to not be a student. In addition to tone, English has all sorts of ways to add a hidden meaning or expectation with sentence ordering. Whether it's, aren't you a student? Are you not a student? You're not a student, are you? You're a student, are you not? Etc. etc. Now, how would we say these two sentences in Japanese? If you haven't watched any of my previous videos and just did a simple literal translation, you might end up with the following. Are you a student? あなたは学生ですか You're a student? あなたは学生ですか Obviously, just translating the individual words to Japanese won't work as you'll lose all the nuances and implied meanings in the second sentence. Let's think a bit about what could be implied by a question such as You're a student? Of course, tone has a lot to do with it, but it's easy to imagine that the person asking the question is maybe surprised or expected the person to not be a student. Finally, from the tone of unexpected surprise and puzzlement, there's also a strong hint of seeking additional explanation. You could almost imagine the next question being why or how can this be? In Japanese, we have a special particle used exactly for this purpose. This explanatory no, as I call it, is used to implicitly seek or provide explanations. Let's first take a quick look at the rules to use this particle. For nouns and na adjectives, we first want to append na and then add no to the end of the word. For e adjectives and verbs, we simply append the no to the end, just like any other particle. For now, we're just going to concentrate on nouns and adjectives and ignore verbs until we learn about them later. Here are some simple examples. How would we use the explanatory no with these four examples? For number one, since gakusei is a noun, it becomes gakusei nano with a na first. For number two, e is an e adjective, so it simply becomes e no. With no na. For number three, ski is a na adjective, so same as nouns, it becomes ski na no. Finally, as we learned before, kire is one of those na adjectives that happen to end in e. So again, this becomes kire na no. So now that we know the rules for using the explanatory no, let's finally answer the first question of how to say you're a student in Japanese. Before we use the explanatory no for the second question, let's first fix that awful textbook translation for the first question. Since you watch my videos, you know that we rarely ever say you, much less anata, which is not very polite. Let's also ignore the polite form for now for simplicity. Okay, now that we have simplified the neutral question, are you a student to just gakse? We now just add the explanatory no using the rule we just learned. Once again, because gakse is a noun, we have to first attach na and then no. So now we have two very different sentences in both English and Japanese. The first sentence is a neutral yes or no question asking whether you're a student. Gakse? The second is implicitly asking for an explanation and hinting at either the speaker's surprise or expectations. In other words, you're a student? Why are you a student? I didn't expect you to be a student, etc. etc. Gakse na no? Gakse na no? The same principle applies for statements as well as questions. 
Though it doesn't translate as well into English, the basic concept remains the same. The first sentence is simply that somebody is a student. For example, I'm a student. However, the second sentence, Gakusei na no, is implicitly explaining that yes, in fact, I am a student. I translated this rather awkwardly to, it is that I'm a student. This implicit explanation is simple but incredibly powerful. Here's a typical example for the explanatory no. Let's say you're holding up an umbrella on a bright and sunny day. This certainly looks like a situation that warrants an explanation. People might be looking at you funny and you want to say, I know what you're thinking. You want to know why I'm using an umbrella on a sunny, clear day, right? Well, the thing is, actually, this is a parasol. If you're not familiar with a parasol, it's an umbrella used to shade oneself from the sun, called higasa in Japanese, using the kanji hi for sun and the word kasa for umbrella. Using the explanatory no, you can implicitly provide an explanation very simply by saying, Kore wa higasa na no. Kore wa higasa na no. In learning the no explanatory particle, it's important to note that different particles may look the same, even though they are in fact completely different. A few lessons back, we learned how to describe noun properties and possessions using another particle that's also no. In that lesson, we learned that gakusei no means students or of student. For example, gakusei no kasa would mean the student's umbrella. However, the explanatory particle we just learned is completely different. It serves a different function, has a different meaning, and also has different grammatical rules. The second sentence, gakusei na no, is using the explanatory no, which requires na for nouns. So, gakusei na no is explained that someone is a student, not that the student owns something. Hopefully by now you have a rough idea of what the explanatory no is, so let's take a look at how to use it in polite speech and also for the declarative da. For nouns and adjectives, just as before we simply need to add des for the polite form and da for the declarative at the end of the sentence. For example, gakusei na no becomes gakusei na no des in polite form and gakusei na no da for the declarative. However, while no des and no da is perfectly correct, in modern Japanese, it is fairly archaic and rarely used in regular daily conversations. Unless you want to sound like an anime character with a strange way of speaking, you want to replace no with m. Mm. So for our example, if you replace the no with m mm and append des or da to the end of the sentence, we end up with gakusei nan des and gakusei nan da here are the same examples from before except now for the polite form. Gakusei nan des, in des, suki nan des, kirei nan des. And here are the same examples for the declarative da. Gakusei nan da, in da, suki nan da, kirei nan da. Finally, here's a simple example dialogue using the explanatory note. あの人は学生なの。うん、先生だよ。え、先生なの。新卒なんだ。A first asks, あの人は学生なの? That person is a student. To drive the point home once again, this is different in tone from the simple neutral question, is that person a student? B replies, うん、先生だよ. No, she's a teacher, you know. A is surprised and responds, Eh, sensei na no? What? She's a teacher? Once again, note that this is different from just saying, Is she a teacher? Finally, B provides an implicit explanation for the surprise by saying, Shinsotsu nan da? With the declarative da to sound more masculine. We can awkwardly translate this as, It is that she is a new graduate. Here's the same dialogue again, but in polite form. あの人は学生なんですか? いいえ、先生ですよ? え、先生なんですか? 新卒なんです。
In this lesson, we learn how to implicitly ask for and provide explanations using the explanatory note. Now, we just quickly covered some very important concepts in a short amount of time, and it may take a while for you to fully understand how to use this particle. Don't worry for now, because in the next lesson, we're going to explore the explanatory note further with various interesting and useful combinations of conjugations. So until then, I'll see you next time.